It's a Friday in Cape Kennedy, Florida. The Apollo 1 crew ends a long week with a test of the command module. A weekend with family is on their minds. I seem to get busier all the time, and, and I find that I'm home less and less. That's about the way it's been going. This is footage from another test a few months earlier. They will simulate space flying conditions inside the capsule. As Friday morning turns to afternoon, they ascend the launch tower. We've run one altitude chamber test on the spacecraft. We'll be running another one and then we'll start our final preparations for launch. They enter the capsule on top of the rocket. It's not fueled yet, so the test is considered non-hazardous. They close the hatch and pressurize the spacecraft with pure oxygen, exactly how it will be in space. Ground control and the Apollo 1 crew begin a long checklist. Communication problems cause delays and frustration. Okay, Gus, you're pretty garbled. More than two hours into the test, Grissom goes off script to express his annoyance. Now we gotta get the moon. We can't talk between two or three buildings. Then, there's a surge of voltage somewhere in the electrical system. Spotty communication reveals the capsule is on fire. Ground control tries to hail the astronauts. They call the workers on the launch pad. It's only 17 seconds from the first call of alarm to radio silence. It's already too late. That fire erupted. It didn't just spread. It was an explosive combustion. The hull of the spacecraft had ruptured from the pressure of the fire. The temperature got up to 1,200 degrees. There were puddles of aluminum that had melted during the fire. It was sparked by an electrical short, fed by pure oxygen, and contained by the heavy hatch designed to lock out space. Instead, it locked in fire. Nobody at NASA realized that they were putting those three astronauts into a bomb that was waiting to go off. <laughs> 